we are making pocket size emotional support chickens in this video. I hope you'll check it out, stick around, and enjoy the fun. These were made on circular knitting machines in three pieces each, plus the little details. These little chickens are made with the exact same pattern, the exact same way as the big ones, but they're only half the number of needles, half the number of rows to make pocket chickens, miniature pocket chickens. They don't require any permits or any permission. So let's go make as big a flock as we want. Three pieces, and I will explain in just a few minutes when we're putting it all together, why you have two pieces for the back. So let's get going. Starting off here, we are going to need a 22 needle circular knitting machine to make the miniature chickens. Then we are going to need a crochet hook, scissors, darning needle, an embroidery needle or sewing needle, and then some different clips for holding pieces together. To make this little chicken, I'm going to continue using the Ferris wheel yarn. These two chickens were made from the same skein of yarn, so I'm just going to keep going. They don't use hardly any yarn. Uh, this is the Ferris wheel, and the colorway is Cherry on Top. It is by Lion Brand. Then I have some waste yarn and another piece of waste yarn with a color that is totally different from everything else because this will be used for a zip strip. I also have some white and black embroidery floss because these little chickens, their heads are too small to put safety eyes in. See how narrow that is? They're way too small to put safety eyes in. So I'm not, I'm doing embroidered eyes and they work just fine. We will need polyfill stuffing. I have these little muslin bags that I purchased and I'm cutting them to make them smaller when I fill up with the uh, poly beads and then I'm just sewing the top shut. So I have a bag, a bean bag basically, to go inside to give, to give them a little bit of weight, a little ballast to keep them so that they sit upright. The beans I'm using are the poly pellets, weighted stuffing beads. Some other yarn that I'm using for the beak. And on this one, I used the yarn from the actual uh, cherry on top to make the comb and the wattle. But you can use any yarn, scraps of yarn, whatever makes you happy. Let's get started actually knitting this. We're going to be making the head to the middle of the back. We are casting on five needles and then we will knit two rows. So five needles, one, two, three, four, five. Something I've found out when I'm work since I've been doing a lot of these panels, you need to be working in odd numbers of needles when you're doing panels because the needle at the end will drop your stitch and you'll end up with one less stitch if you try to do an even number. Just a little Make sure that this pulls all the way down in, just like that, on all of them. Now we're going to reset our counter to zero. And I'm going to do a down and back. So just two rows, one, whoops, come on, there we go, two. I'm going to increase one at the end of every row. So the end of row two, I'm increasing one, I'm going to knit back across, make sure that the stitch drops all the way down, 
and increase one. Increasing is just knitting that next number, next needle. Don't worry about having to do anything funny. All you have to do is go past by one needle and one full set of these little fingers to increase. And now we're going to increase the next one. I'm going, this was the needle I last worked. I'm now knitting the next needle and then knitting back across to the other end. I'm going to continue doing this exact same thing of increasing one, working back across, increasing one, working back across until I have 18 needles completely cast on. Yeah. Now we need to do four rows of straight knitting. We're going to cast off with a waist yarn cast off. I am dropping yarn to the inside here so that I can do my single crochet bind off. Some yarn here. for my waist yarn cast off. And I'll do, you know, four or five rows. That, and now, I'm just going to run this around and drop it off. And that's what the piece looks like before we've stretched it. And then I love watching the, the stitches all pop into position. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. I love these colors. Get this waist yarn cast on. We're going to cast on 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Make sure it goes under that last finger there. When you're knitting, you need to make sure that that goes, pulls it down to the inside. You know it's cast on and it's knit that stitch. And we're just going to do, you know, five rows, about five rows. That's three, four, five. We're going to drop that down in. Now we're going to do a thing called a zip strip, and that is just knitting a single piece of yarn, not carrying the working yarn or the waist yarn with me, but just the single piece of yarn, getting knit in, going across, just like that. What happens when you knit the single piece of yarn going across, you can pull that out of so the waist yarn, pulls off easily. Otherwise, waist yarn on the cast on edge is rather problematic. So we're going to reset the, the counter. I always want to call it a timer. And we are going to knit four rows. So down and back, four rows. This is three, and this is four, we're going to be increasing a needle on each end until we have 18 needles. And now we're going to do six rows, just down and back, down and back. All right. Now we've done those six rows, we are going to waste yarn cast off. So leave 
some extra yarn to the inside for the bind off. You don't need a zip strip on this one. If you wanted to, you would put the zip strip right now, the first strip, and then you would go back and do your multiple of stitches. I'm not worried about it. The cast off end is really easy to pull this, the waist yarn off. Drop the yarn and then run around and there. So now this again, what those stitches look like before you pop them in place and after. That is so pretty. I love that. Pop, pop. So now we have the two back pieces. Now we're going to do the chest, the gusset. For the gusset, the, cent the, the chest, this part right here, we're going to cast on five stitches. This is a long tail cast on. You don't have to worry about leaving extra inside. It's three, four, five. Now this, this particular one, we're going to do three rows. Plain one. Actually, that's just cast on. So now we are going to do three rows plain. So one, two, three. We're going to cast on one at each end. So one, one. Now we're going to go down and back and then cast on one. So down and back and cast on one. Then we're going to go to the other end and cast on one. We're going to get to a total of a total of 13 stitches. So casting on one. Now we're going to go down and back. Down and back. Cast on one, go to the other end, cast on one, and now we're going to go down and back, cast on one, right there. Cast on one. We've got 13 needles cast on. We're going to knit until we're at row 32. And I'll meet you back here when I'm, when I'm doing the long tail cast off. I'm going to get my yarn needle, my scissors. I'm going to cut off the main ball of yarn. We're going to go around once, right up to that very first stitch. And we're going to thread our needle and pick up those stitches, just like if you were doing a hat. There we go. And get make sure that you run through that very last stitch. We're not snugging this down. This is the under the belly part. This is the under the chin part. And we can actually move this out of the way now. So I have a 4.0 crochet hook. This is where having that extra bit of yarn 
makes all the difference. So you see where this <laughs> waist yarn, the end of the waist yarn, and the beginning of my main yarn. I'm going to slide my crochet hook underneath the loop. Now the loops that I'm crocheting into are the very last loops right here. You see these very last loops of the main yarn. They're stacked between the waist yarn. So you've got waist yarn on the right and the left or the front and the back of each of these stitches that you're going to use. We're going to do just a simple single crochet simple single crochet bind off. So what I'm doing, all I did was reach through the loop and pick up that working yarn. And now I have one loop on my, my hook. I'm going to go under the next loop, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, and now pull through all the loops on your hook. Now you're back to one loop on the hook. You're going to go under the next loop, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, pull through. That's single crochet. Now that's single crochet US terminology. So under the loop, I'm going to show you one more time, under the next loop, wrap over, and all I'm doing is laying the yarn over and pulling it through, laying the yarn over and pulling it through. I'm going to do that all the way across and I'll meet you back here. We're on the very last stitch. This stitch, you need to make sure that you catch this. It's at the very edge, and you want to make sure that you go through the top of that, the top loop of that, wrap over, pull through, wrap over. And you have a choice here now. You do not have to do this next step. Just saying. I want to put a simple scallop along the back edge of my chicken. About, I want to give her that, that little ruffle of feathers. See, just like these. And to do that, I am going to pick up from the working yarn because it's moved on in the colors. So now it's down to this kind of creamy buff color. And by having that, it's going to just pull it in to the colors of the belly. So I'm going to do this. I want to. You don't have to. I'm going to keep my needle on here. This still has a little bit of that extra yarn. I'm ignoring it now. And I'm going to just pick up the new yarn. And I think I'm going to just tie these two together right on the edge. I can fix that knot. I don't have to make it a tight knot, but I just want it to be so that my yarn isn't sliding. And then I can cut off a bunch of that extra. And to make it even easier, we can remove the waste yarn. Let's do that. Waste yarn is gone. And that's what just your single crochet bind off looks like. It's very pretty. And it would give you a lovely little, it gives you a lovely little edge like this if you just do the single crochet bind off. But I want the extra. I want to go the extra step. Super easy. And I'll tell you exactly how to do it. So let's just get my, let's just get lined back up here. You see, you've got these little V's, these little chain V's going across. We're going to do a slip stitch in the first one. And all that is a slip stitch is just go under those, under that V, wrap the yarn over, pull it up, and then pull it through the loop on the hook. Now we're going to do the scallop pattern that I'm doing, which is a super simple, very basic one. We're going to do a single crochet in the next that next loop. Now we're going to stay in that loop. We're going to wrap over, go in that space. Now you have three loops on the hook. You're going to wrap over and pull through all three. 
in the same space again, we're going to do a single crochet. And then in the next space, we're going to do a slip stitch. We're making a tiny mini shell with a single crochet, a half double crochet, a single crochet. Then the next space is the slip stitch. The next space right here is a single crochet, the half double crochet, which is wrap over. You can set your finger on the yarn, go in, wrap over, pull through. Now you have three loops on your hook, wrap over, pull through all the loops on your hook. Go back into that same space and do a single crochet. The next space, do a slip stitch. And that's all I'm going to do all the way across. And I'll meet you back here when I'm at the end. Okay, I'm all the way across. I'm down to my very last stitch. I'm going to do a slip stitch. Now, if you end up with one or two stitches at the end of your row, just do slip stitches in those because this is going to be on the edge of your, um, of your belly for where those, those stitches are. You need a little seam allowance. So yeah, just slip stitch, slip stitch, and finish. And look at that. We have a beautiful little, beautiful little edge. That's very pretty. So that one's done. I'm going to do the same thing, single crochet bind off, on both ends and then on the tail which is the end that has only 11 needles I'm going to do the same shell bind off with or shell uh, decoration which gives you this lovely little ruffly feathers effect I'll meet you back here when I'm all done with that we've got this one all bound off and the little edging put on for the tail. So now we need to remove the waist yarn. I didn't want to do that without you. So here we go. I'm going to remove the cast off waist yarn first. That's all gone. And now the cast on waist yarn. So what you want to do is make sure that you don't have this, the ends of this cast on yarn tied in any knots. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. I'm going to pull on it like this. Boop! That's out. And look at that. The cast off, the cast on yarn came off right, right away, really easy. Now you've got your back tail. You've got the front and head and we're going to we're going to attach these two pieces to each other and when you're doing that you want to be able to shape your chicken a little bit you see how this comes back a little bit that's because this piece here actually is all the way up to inside her body here but it's connected at the corners. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to grab our little clippy connectors and one of the little clothespin kind. And I'll show you why in just a second. We're going to connect the very corners right here, connect those corners and put a clippy on it. And we're going to connect the very corner on the other end, very corner. And yes, you could have knit this all in one piece and it would be flat like this straight. But then you wouldn't have this extra little kind of shaping coming along here. You've got some, you have some shaping that goes on. So I wanted that shaping. So to do that, I'm going to tuck this bottom one up inside just a little and adjust this top 
So basically it's coming down in a slight arc. And then I'm going to grab one of these safety pin type stitch markers to attach those two pieces together. Now all I'm going to do is a kind of a running back stitch along this edge, right on the bind off edge. Then I will flip it to the inside. And with this yarn right here, I will catch this bind off edge because look, there's, there's going to be some overlap and then the overlap gets narrower and narrower as you get down to these edges. So I will just do a quick little whip stitch where I connect this bind off edge to the reverse stocking net side here. That's all it's going to be. Well, my video cut off and I didn't realize it. I was explaining how I used some of the same yarn and did a running back stitch across the back here. Then I flipped it over and used some of the yarn that came from the second piece. And I did a whip stitch through just a single bump on the back and not coming through to the front. At this point right here, you can assemble this part any way you want. I'm ready to start crocheting up the beak, wattle, and comb. The comb, we're going to crochet across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we made a chain of seven. Then we're going to work back into that chain. So I'm going to do a sing a slip stitch in the first first chain. I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next chain. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch in the third chain. A half double crochet in the fourth chain. Basically, I'm doing slip stitch, half double, slip stitch, half double. And that's going to be everything that we need to do for that whole comb. We're, all it is is chain seven and then do slip stitch, half doubles all the way across. And that comb is done. And now I'm going to take and just tie these two pieces together using the tails, these two ends, just using those tails. And those ends will get used for attaching it. If you look at this, see, you've got a pretty little comb that will fit on the top of her head. Or make a slip knot. You're going to chain two. So I like to hold on to the base of that knot. One, two. And the reason why I'm holding on to the base of it is because we're going to go into that very first chain. We're going to do a single crochet, a half double crochet. A double crochet, so we haven't done one of those yet. So a double crochet is the same as the half double. You wrap over, go through, wrap over, pull back. You have three loops. Now you're going to wrap over and pull through two loops. You have two loops left. Wrap over, pull through two loops. Now you're going to wrap over, go back into that same chain. Everything's being worked in the same chain. And we're going to do a half double. Then we're going to do a single. And now we're going to do a slip stitch. See how we've made this little half a waddle. Now we're going to chain two. We're going to go back to that first chain and we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to 
single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and then we're going to slip stitch. Pull through, trim off, and now we've got these two little waddles. And I'm going to take this and tie the two ends together. See, now those two ends together, your little waddle is going to go right on underneath of the beak. So to do the beak, we are going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to go into the first chain loop after. So we're going to go and we're going to do single crochets. So we're going to make seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven single crochets. Now we're going to reduce or decrease. So we're not doing it. We're not doing a chain. We're just going to turn it over and we're going to go into the first. You see, there's these little, these little holes. We're going to go into the first hole right here and pull up the yarn. We're going to go into the next hole over and pull up the yarn. Tighten your tighten those stitches down. You don't want this to be loose and floppy because this is going to make a little triangle for the beak. Then pull through all the loops. Then we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, three. Keep them nice and nice and snug. Then we're going to do another decrease. So we're going to go into that next little hole there. And we're going to go in this side one. And the side, the loop is coming up the edge of the side. So you just have to find those two little legs, put your hook through it, and then pull up your yarn. Pull through all the loops. We're going to flip it over. Do the same thing again. We're going to decrease. We're going in the first little hole, in the second little hole, wrap over, pull through. Now we're only going to do one single crochet. Then we're going to finish off doing the decrease on this last edge, like that. We're going to flip it over. We're going to do another decrease in this first one. In the second one. And then we're going to finish it with just a slip stitch to the edge in that last stitch. And then pull this through. Now that gives us a little triangle or a little pyramid, a little fan shape. We're going to take the yarn from the end here, put it on a needle, and you're going to roll up into a little tiny cone, and that's going to make your beak. See? And then we're going to just catch both sides. I'm just whip stitching this together. Tie them together. Tie those ends together. And now we have the beak. I'm going to 
go ahead and get all of these ends worked in except for this top edge this is the head little drawstring there you want to make sure it gets pulled in as tightly as you can so that it is as smooth time okay. to put the beak on and to do that we have to finish the top of the head so i'm this is the the front top of the head right here right above the beak so i've drawn it down as tight as possible and i'm going to stitch through some of those gathering stitches as best i can because i want them to be nice and tight as tight as you possibly can this is the top of the beak And I'm shoving most of that inside. I just want a bit of the beak sticking out. And I'm going to use that yarn to sew on the beak, however it makes sense to you. So I'm doing a little running around stitch, kind of a whip stitch. I am not going to completely close this in though. It's not going to get completely closed up like this because I have the gusset that's going to be going under the chin also. So what I'll do is I come down to this last stitch on the edge and I'm going to stitch across through the inside of the beak and come out the other side so I can Get some more of that head attached to the beak. But we're doing this just through the edges. Right here, just through the edge. Remember, the eyes are not going on the beak. The eyes will be going on the head. And we're going to be doing that uh, the eyes just as a an embroidery eye because there's no room inside the head for a safety eye. Make sure that this is truly attached down here at the base. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this through. We're going to get that attached. All right, all those threads are going to just go to the inside. I don't need them to be so long. And now we are going to sew the gusset. To make to put the gusset on, first thing we have to do is lay our chicken out flat like this. Now you can see that curve on her back and you can see the little, her little tail and the head. Start first with it flat like this. Now you're going to tip her head back to the end to, to right there. Her beak is pointing in towards her back. Then we are going to take the gusset piece and I am going to pull this down and work those work that yarn so that those loops are flat this is going to be stitched on here this point right here is going to be under the under the beak right there. So I want to connect those right now. And yes, I know I have not tied that, tied this off yet. I'm going to use this little bit right here to attach it to the, 
to attach it to the beak and to her uh, to the sides right here and then we will attach in more yarn that will sew down along the edge and down along the edge so let's get this just lined up for now we're going to line this up the reverse stocking net side of the gusset goes against the stocking net side of the what chicken. that does is it gives you that lovely change of texture without having to figure out how to how to get you know a pearl side this is just your reverse stocking net and it works so well so this is the right side this is the right side so we have right sides together and we're going to connect these edges all the way out and what i'm doing is i'm tucking that those little feathers i'm tucking them in on that edge right there and then we're going to come all the way down here and this ends about two rows before the bottom of the chicken. Now this edge right here, this drawstring edge, this is the underneath of the belly right here under the tail. So I'm just lining this up like that. Turn it around, do the same thing. Make sure that that beak stays to the inside because you want the beak on the outside when you're done. Unroll those edges, clip, unroll those edges all the way down to that feather where the feather detail is. Make sure it's tucked in, clip, Line that up. Don't sew with this drawstring. You want that drawstring available to tie off the bottom of your, your gusset. So don't sew with that. Just let it hang out. And when you're sewing this together, you need to make sure that you're not allowing this to roll in, but stitch it however it makes sense to you. I'm going to stitch mine right along the edge, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that way it, it makes a little bit of a tighter, tidier edge here. You can do some decorative stitching on the outside after it's sewn, all up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get that stitched first. I do want to get the top of the gusset tied off. So we're going to, we're going to finish that little bit first. Need all the details, right? We always need all the details. So I'm going to actually pull that clippy out of the way. I'm going to make sure that those little strands of yarn are up and i'm going to stitch through, through the, the right here see i'm just stitching through the beak and through the gusset and now i'm going to come over and stitch through the beak through the gusset and connect it to the back of the head like that. Then I'm going to come back across stitch through the beak, through the gusset, through the corner of the head or through the corner of the back and just get those tied off. 
and then I'm going to tie those pieces together. I really don't want this to pop loose. Now to stitch the whole thing together, we are going to start back here by the tail. We're going to go up the side, across under the chin, back down the side and finish at the edge of the tail. And I'm going to do it with my running back stitch. You can do any stitch you want. And I will meet you back here when we've got this all stitched together. Don't cut this, this piece right here. This is the, that uh, drawstring. Don't cut that drawstring. Just, just trust me, <laughs> trust me. Put my little bag of uh, poly pellet stuffing in and I'll show you that part. I'll show you the stuffing of it, but I'm not going to show you the sewing of the, of the bag. Okay, I've gone all the way around. I did kind of a running back stitch. So you can see how you've got, you know, the flat belly right now and the kind of bowed up part for the back. All right, so I've got this tied off here at this edge. I am just going to run this back through the inside of that, um, that stitching just like that and then cut this off that way that isn't going to come popping loose we don't need it out there anymore we're going to flip this right side out and now you can see how that tummy is all nicely stitched in. And the back of her head is ready. Is take a cut off piece of one of those of one of my little muslin bags. I'm going to put some poly pellets in it. to give her a little bit of weight I'm gonna hold on to it very carefully first off I'm just going to do a quick running stitch just making sure that it's above the poly pellets so let's grab some stuffing that goes up here in the top of the head. We're trying not to overstuff. We don't want to stretch it out too much. Then we start working our stuffing up into the neck and the back of the head. Put that poly pellet bag in. This is going to get mushed around and squished around, so not too worried. Fluff your stuffing. You don't want it to be hard little lumps. And you also don't want to stuff it too hard. You don't want it to be hard little lumps, and you also don't want to stuff it too hard. I think that's probably plenty of stuffing. We're going to grab the drawstring and drawstring that up. Take the yarn needle. And before I am too, yeah, there's too much stuffing. See, you have to Kind of work with it a little bit there that'll be good oh 
Oh, I like that. That's perfect. So now we've got the that drawn up. We're going to tie off that drawstring just like when you're doing a hat. Then we're going to stitch across. You want to close up any, you know, big gaps. We're going to go up the tail, back and forth, up the tail. This is the third one that I've done of these sweet little pocket chickens. My little miniature emotional support chickens. going to go back and forth here. I don't want to sew this off on the very edge because I want there to be a little bit of uh, ruffle, a little bit of three-dimensionality to it. So I'm just going back and forth and closing up that opening without closing up the end of my, my ruffles, my feathers. We're not going to ruffle those feathers. All right. And then we're going to go back down through. Just through all of that. Like that. And this little bit right here of the tail, I am going to just run back through all the way to that junction a couple stitches just to give it a little bit more stability back here give it a little tie through twice through the loop twice and then I'm just going to go ahead and run that through the inside and out. Oh, look at her. All smooshy, squishy, fun. Pop that thread back in. And now, so we're going to stitch on the waddle under her chin. Take the two ends. And we're just going to run those through the head, through the body, all the way down, through the stuffing. Bury the, bury that yarn. There we go. Mush her around. Oh, so cute. Back of the head to the front. So we're going to start at the back. Right here. Go through. And through the head through the, the comb, through the head. Just going to work my way up, just doing kind of a whip stitch all the way up. to the inside, all the way to the inside, all the way through the stuffing. There we go. Look at her. So now she needs two eyes and it's just going to be simple embroidery with the black embroidery floss. We're just basically going to make a couple knots. 
first knot though I'm going to take and run up through all of the maybe not that far first knot I'm going to take this run it up and get that knot popped to the inside come on pop you inside we're going to do a couple, two or three stitches. Whoops. <laughs> so one, two, three. That looks good finish the finish that fourth stitch and then we're going to go one two three four one two three four And we're going to go back through underneath those stitches, catch one, go back through underneath these stitches, catch one. It's basically, we've, we've basically made all of our knots. Now I'm going to run this down through the inside, through the, through all of the stuffing. And now I just need to make two little white sparks in her eyes. We're going to start low, come up through the stitching, up through the front of her eye, there we go. Just make sure that thread got all the way and I'm gonna make two little stitches. Yeah, three little stitches. Then come to the other side, come through the front corner of the eye And make three little stitches. That's one, two, three. Make sure that they're not too tight. There we go and run that through the eyeball and trim it off. She's giving you a little bit of the side eye, isn't she? So here we go. Here's my flock so far. We've got three of my big girls and three of the little girls. Sweet emotional support chickens that don't require any permits or any permission. You can have as many as you want and fill your house. Nobody can, can yell at you. You could even make roosters if you wanted to. <laughs> I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Remember that the pattern is available on the website, link down below. If you want a printable version of the pattern, make sure to check out the Patreon. And thank you. I want you to go out, do something creative, take care of yourself, be kind, and be kind to yourself. You know, these girls, that's what they're all about, being kind to yourself. <laughs>